Very good. Thanks, Rod. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. So the task now is to keep everybody awake after lunch. All right. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm originally from Canada, obviously not Australian. Um, came off about a 6,000 acre grain farm in southwest Manitoba, right on the U.S. and Saskatchewan borders. Uh, didn't have a transition plan on the farm and uh, dad and uncle were ready to retire and uh, rather than going you know, up to here in debt, we thought we'd try two years in Australia, we'll do something different, get off the farm and uh, that was nearly six years ago. Farm's been sold and uh, yeah, we've, we're, this is home now. Uh, when I first, well I guess also in Canada on the side of side from the farm, uh, spent nine years doing agronomy work in all three prairie provinces and then five years as a rep for a seed company out of uh, southwest Manitoba, southeast Saskatchewan. Came over to Australia with Croplands Equipment, uh, I was a rep for northern New South Wales and Queensland, so a big focus on Rogator and Weighted. Uh, and actually I'd say 90% of my time was, was spent with the Weighted optical spraying. Uh, but after you know, a, lot of, a lot of time uh, demanded to be away with the young family in Toowoomba, uh, the guys in Dolby Rural Supplies actually offered me a position and just an opportunity to be home a lot more. So I've been with them for a little over two years and just doing, again, optical spraying, just the weeded stuff with, uh, with Dolby Rural. So uh, optical spraying isn't, uh, oh, I, I guess it's pretty straightforward, it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're using some type of lens, some type of camera to pick up a weed and then we'll turn on a corresponding nozzle to spray the weed. So really that's all it's doing. Uh, there's a few different types of systems in use and I, I say three types. We've got the near infrared sensors, so the Weed It and the new Weed It Quadro which is coming out. Weed Seeker 2 which has uh, just been kind of released as well. So they are actually looking for chlorophyll or color and that reflectance uh, as that, that beam is reflected back will trigger the, the nozzle behind it and spray the weed. I really see it as two camera based systems. Um, you've got your uh, boom mounted, so your IC Plus from Agrifac. Uh, Blue River Tech, I uh, hadn't heard a lot about them uh, until I oh, had some discussions I guess about some cotton spraying they were doing and shortly after John Deere bought them for around 300 million dollars so you can see that there's definitely some interest there. And the auto weed which you'll have the chance to see uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, we've also got the drone based cameras so really it's uh, different type of platform and a different way of having to get that information from from the camera to the nozzle so really it's, it's downloading that information uh, correlating it and plugging it into your sprayer so uh, just a few different things to look at there there's a lot of benefits to optical spraying and I guess those benefits are really what's been driving the sales over the last couple of years hard to control weeds are being controlled um, we're uh, we're getting ahead of feather top roads grass fleabane thistle uh, we've got guys using them on suckers, you know, Grimoxone, just a lot of different, uh, different weeds. Um, really, and that's what drove this interest in optical spraying. I, I had a phone call when I was with Crawl Plans after being there for around six months or so from, uh, from agronomist out of the St. George Surratt region. And he said, look, we're losing the battle with feather top here. There's some guys that are going to have to go back to grass and grazing. It's that bad. And we see weed it as, as something that we can use to start to get ahead of it. So we did a field day, we had oh, 30 or 40 guys there and took a little demo trailer around in some circles and sprayed some weeds and talked about the features and benefits. And from that we ended up taking nine guys on a bus trip to Adelaide. Um, two cartons of beer were gone before we got out of the city. And it was that kind of trip for three days, but we saw a number of, of growers down there that were using optical sprayers. And from that interest we sold four machines around Surratt. And really from that, it just grew and grew and grew. But really the focus for us was uh, to try to do a good job to keep the machines running. And uh, it just really grew from there. Chemical savings I put second on the list because that cannot be the focus of your optical spraying. If you're doing this to just save money, you're not going to be doing uh, the systems any justice at all. A lot of growers that we work with initially get it. And the first thing they want to do is mix up a broad acre rate of Glion 240 and go out and just put that on the weeds. Yeah, it'll work on you know, the easy to kill stuff, but it's really not doing what, what we're targeting this, these systems to do. Chemical rotation, uh, you know, traditionally we're out there with a big reliance on glyphosate and germoxone. And uh, you know, this is a way that we can start introducing some of these higher end chemistries, different modes of actions, different groups, and different mixes, and, uh, and really target them where they have to be. Water use reduction, if you're going out with yourself propelled all the time, you know, 80, 80 liters per hectare, 60, well, 40 realistically with some. Um, 
it's still a big water requirement. A lot of times with these optical sprayers, you can mix up 4,000 liters and you're set for the day. So it's, uh, you know, you're, you're not carting water, you're not, you know, having that, that big requirement. And the reduced seed set. Of course, we're here to talk about that today. If the weeds are not surviving these chemical applications, they're not setting seed and they're not going to continue to become a problem. New Farm put out this 24-hour risk profile for summer spraying, which is great information. But as you can see, there's about six hours there that they're saying, yep, you're right to go. So it's, yeah, it's really narrowing that window up. In the afternoon applications, you can continue to go, but just be wary of heat. So you might want to increase your water volume, make sure you've got a decent droplet size, and, and monitor plant stress. So if you know that 40 liter application on a 40 degree day, you know, you might be losing a lot of evaporation. Uh, inversion is, is definitely a word we've been hearing a lot about lately. So, you know, around sunset, we have to be very careful depending where the wind speed is. And then through the night, really, they want you to use an, an XC droplet, so extremely coarse. Uh, slow down, lower your boom height, and put on more water. All things that we're able to do with these optical sprayers as well. So, you know, one nozzle comes on, we're a 100 liter equivalent, and it increases as we have, have more nozzles come on. We've got a ground following, or, you know, low carried suspended boom with the nozzles around 800 mil, but the ground following boom we're offering a 750 nozzle height. So, I mean, we're, we're ticking a lot of these boxes to ensure that you guys can keep spraying. With the APVMA coming out and saying uh, through summer spraying in a lot of areas, uh, 240D had to be an extremely coarse droplet, you know, set boom heights, things like that. Uh, New Farm was able to get an exemption for Amicide Advance and Trooper 75D. Uh, even though we don't use a lot of 2,4-D through the optical sprayers, it was still you know, a nice little tool to still have. But what they're saying there is with the optical spot sprayers, you can do it. A minimum coarse droplet. Now, uh, the 40 degree 03 we use is a coarse droplet. It's an even nozzle. So having that even nozzle means that we're not going to get a lot of the driftable fines like you would out of uh, an ordinary 110 degree uh, band nozzle. So it's uh, yeah, doing a good job at, at managing those fines. Consistent boom heights, which we have with the ground following boom, even the linkage that we, we have is ground following, so it's, you know, it's keeping that height right. And we'd cover no greater than 10%. Um, now that we're going to ISOBUS systems, we'll be able to monitor the percentage, but really it's just uh, something that comes with, with time knowing what that percentage will be or working out the numbers after you finish spraying. So uh, I think Tony showed this earlier, but uh, New Farm has some uh, products that are registered for application through optical spot sprayers. So the uh, Weedmaster DST is the only, only glyphosate registered. Uh, we've been using a lot of Alliance, which is Gramoxone and Amitrol. Uh, when the weedits were first being introduced, we did a lot of straight glyphosate. So rather than put on you know, a liter or two of glyer, we were mixing four, five, six liters. And we were relying a lot on just straight Gramoxone. A couple liters of Gramoxone uh, up to five. Well, some guys were up to 10 liters per hundred of Gramoxone. Massive rates. But we've really gone away from those individual products. Uh, we're not really doing what we're trying to accomplish here any justice if we're going to continue to do the same things at higher rates. So we've, we've started to rely on things like Alliance, um, lots of Starane with the Gly, even Express in some cases, but just you know, trying to mix up the chemistries. All right, so I just want to talk about the application of the chemicals. This is one thing that confuses a lot of people, confuses me, um, so don't ask any questions. I'm just kidding. Um, because these sprayers are, are, are not run by uh, rate controllers, what we're spraying is determined by your speed, your nozzle, and your pressure. Okay, so with the 40 degree 03 even nozzle, like you can see in the picture there, if we're traveling at 14 kilometers an hour, and we've got the boom height, your, your nozzles are running 750 mil-ish above the ground. As you're traveling over, over and doing your spray, um, one nozzle comes on, and for example, we're gonna mix 3.5 liters of, of Weedmaster DST, uh, just for simplicity. Single nozzle comes on, and that's what we've, we've sprayed. 3.5 liters is put on the weed, machine carries on. Now we come across a little bigger weed. We've got two nozzles that'll come on in that application. So our chemical rate and, uh, is, is increased because we've just added another 200 mil from that weighted application onto the outside because we've got a bigger weed. So the average across the entire area on the bottom, we've now applied 145 liters equivalent. Our chemical rate averages out to five liters. 
However, where it's fully overlapped there, we've doubled the rate. So it's seven liters equivalent that we're putting onto that target weed. And you get a big old milk thistle or something that, you know, big problem at the moment. Um, it really, is, I don't know where it's getting the moisture from, but it's, they're still growing. And uh, we go out and spray, and we've got three nozzles that'll come on and spray that, that single plant. Our, uh, our rate increases now 70%. We've got an area of triple overlap, double overlap, and then the single again on the edges. So we'll average out to 6.2 across that entire area. But where we've triple overlapped, our chemical rate is now 10 and a half liters. Who's confused? All right, I got an honest answer. I, I, it does take a while to get your head around this, but it's very important to understand because this is what will dictate how much chemical you've got to put in the tank. When we go out and we want to self, uh, just do a normal blanket application, the really rule of thumb is the bigger the weeds, the more chemical we put in. When we do a weeded application, the bigger the weeds are, the less chemical we put in. We rely on the nozzles to be your rate controller. Bigger the weeds, more nozzles come on, higher the rate. So as we get looking at things like residuals, uh, that's where we can get into a lot of trouble. So that's just very important to understand that if we are going to be targeting bigger plants, and we've got three nozzles coming on, there's going to be areas of triple the rate that we've put in the tank. Now, when we talk mixing with optical sprayers, you'll hear a lot of liters per 100 liters of water. We don't know what the applied rate is going to be. It will be determined by the size of the weed that we're targeting. So something like that, that area triple overlap is targeted right onto the plant. So if we're going out with five liters of Alliance, for example, it's actually 15 that we're putting right onto that plant. And that's what's given us that, that big control. But that's also what's you know, gonna get us into trouble if we don't continue to mix these modes of action. Now, we had guys that 1,100 liter tank would put 1,000 liters of water in and 100 liters of Gramoxone. And Feathertop would still come back from that. So where we've got three nozzles coming on on those big patches, that's 30 liters equivalent going on that plant. It, it'd stay burnt off for an extra week maybe, but it'd start coming back again. So we've had to change our, our approach to this. You know, um, it's getting expensive to get out there and run over and, and do a lot of these blanket sprays, especially the way that we want to do. So we've just had to you know, change our approach and, and what we're looking at there. I had to approach uh, a chemical reseller when I was with crop plants to become a dealer and that dealer I approached made a living selling chemical. So it was a very difficult initial conversation. Hey guys, uh, I know you love selling Glyon 240, but we've got something here we'd like you to take to the, the guys you deal with in the market and help them use less chemical. First meeting didn't go great, I'll be honest with you. It, uh, it, the owner was yeah, very reluctant, but the head agronomist was uh, you know, looking at this as a tool that they could use to help them get ahead of hard to kill weeds. Uh, when I had the first meeting with the agronomy group, it was also not really well received. They thought, you're going to come in with this type of technology and it's going to limit what we're doing in fallows because guys will just throw in high rates of glide or high rates of gramoxone and kill everything. They won't need us to do any, any agronomy work. Couldn't be further from the truth. Really, for any type of optical spraying system to work, there's got to be a farmer committed, there's got to be a, a machinery dealer or whoever sells it committed, and the agronomist has to know what they're putting in the tank. Um, we're even finding we've got to start talking to other agronomy groups when we're selling weed to their clients because a lot of them just still aren't doing the right thing. It's things that have taken you know, us two or three years to work out. <coughs> I still haven't worked it out. Um, leading up to this meeting, I got three of the agronomists cornered in the agronomy room before I left and uh, I thought, in five minutes, I'm just going to quiz these guys on what they're doing. And all three of them had a different approach. And in fact, as I got talking to a few others, everybody's you know, really focused on different weeds and really approaching them a different way. So, you know, we've got to do a, a better job just communicating that, uh, that ourselves within the group. One product we've been using lately, uh, Bifo or Glufosinate. Um, this is something that uh, Mel Salisbury from New Farm had brought to us, wanted to do some testing with it. And uh, we were able to line up a grower uh, right, right along the Warrago Highway at Warra and, uh, and did some different strips with, with this Glufosinate. It's a group N, so it's not something that, that you'd be uh, readily using up here, but uh, it's been doing a great job for us. So commonly we've been doing a lot of Alliance and even for Feathertop, it really did a really good job across the grasses and broadleaf. So that was our Gramoxone and Amitrol. 
So we thought we'll top up the Alliance with another five liters of BIFO and we'll see what, see what it does. We also thought we we're going to go in real hard with the BIFO at 10 liters and then we're also going to try a, a regular mix, so Leopard and Enhance, followed by Gramoxone and Clyde uh, through, the, through the weighted as well. So we went in with some pretty high rates and what we found is that even you know, with that lower rate of BIFO in there, after 31 days we were still finding a lot of regrowth on the bigger plants. Smaller plants were smashed, but the bigger ones, uh, everything was starting to regrow again. The BIFO application, it's magic, and uh, actually very happy with, with what the Leopard had done as well. But here's a way we can now introduce a Group N and, and keep the Group A out of that application. So very important for us. So BIFO is registered at 3.75 litres per hectare, so, and it's about $15 a litre, maybe slightly over but pretty close. So if you want a blanket spray, that registered mix, $56 a hectare, you need at least 80 liters of water, uh, hopefully more, but coverage is key. It's a contact herbicide. I used to use it a lot in Canada as, as Liberty. Um, so coverage is key. Uh, you really can't have too much water with it. So we went out with that 10 liters per hundred of BIFO and we've uh, been able to take something that would cost $150 per hectare as a blanket spray but because we're targeting 5% of the paddock or less, it's costing us 750 a hectare or, or less. So it's, it's very economical to use that, that product at that rate and, and do a good job controlling those weeds. Now it's been absolutely magic, but we don't want to fall into the trap of BIFO followed by BIFO followed by BIFO. But we've just introduced a new tool that we can use to do a good job on these weeds. Now it's not registered, so this is large plot data only, all right? So, but we've had quite a bit of it go out and the results have been fantastic. So just nice to introduce a, another thing that we can use. So when I had the agronomist cornered, I just said, you know, what kind of challenges have you guys been facing? And, and every one of them, you know, had a different story. Uh, we've got a lot of tall fleabane that's been introduced around Dolby, uh, Dolby up through Jimber. And it's resistant to glyphosate. It laughs at paraquat. Diquat really doesn't touch it, get a little burning on the leaf edges, but it grows back. And it's something that through the weed it with, with uh, well, Tordon mainly, or, or Sharpen, they've been able to get really good control of tall fleabane. The grower that we did a lot of testing with this, uh, John Griffith, he actually, off his own dollar, got, oh, I think it was 15 different jugs of chemical. And him and the agronomist did trials. When his kids were coming home from school for school holidays, they were out there chipping tall flea bank. So it was a, getting to the point where John said, we're going to have to do something different or I'm just going to have to plant it to grass or sell it and it can be somebody else's problem. He's getting very frustrated with it. So by using the, uh, the 75D, getting great control, getting ahead of it. But again, not just relying on a constant 75D application. It's something that's being used strategically and, and doing a really good job. Volunteer chickpeas, uh, just getting a lot of regrowth, we just weren't able to get really good control, but by introducing Express to the mixes for low populations, doing a magic job. Uh, again, just that Pickleram or, or Starane, at, uh, well since Starane's not registered, it's uh, um, the new farm chemical. Comet, Comet thank you. Uh, at three liters, again, just a magic job on, on those types of mixes. BIFO, Alliance, and, and even if we have to, Gly with Verdict has been used, but really watch that Verdict rate. Uh, I was out with some growers and big patches of feather top were present, and I think they went in with half a litre of Verdict per 100 litres of water. We didn't have any feather top growing back the next year, but we also didn't have barley and they didn't have sorghum growth following that. So really had to watch what, what the rate of verdict is. So again, bigger patch, we need to get a much smaller rate to, to go in there. But even the native grasses, uh, Biffo is doing a really good job on them at the moment. So just nice to have that extra tool. Residuals through optical sprayers. Group A's are good, but again, like I said, watch the rate and how many broadleaf weeds are present. So if you're going out there and you've got verdict mixed and you're thinking, I'm gonna smash this flea bane, or a feather top, but 70% of what you're actually spraying is flea bane, it's really a wasted application. So we wanna just try to manage the individual weeds, not just try to do a blanket approach. And Trooper, uh, they're just, again, really watching that plant back to sorghum or cotton. Um, what the agronomists were saying is when they use the residuals, yes, they have to manage the rate, but they're willing to sacrifice 1% of a plant row to, 
to control 5% of the entire area in the, plat in the paddock. So again, it's just one of those tools that you wouldn't want to rely, out, rely on too heavily. And uh, Train and Valor, uh, we did spray some of this out with a few growers back in March, but it hasn't rained since. So it's really hard to say what kind of residual control that Terrain will give us through optical sprayers. So again, just kind of watch this space. We'll, we'll just continue to work with that. It's been really good that uh, you know, we've got nine agronomists that, that I get to work with and get to bounce ideas off. And a lot of chemical companies are approaching them saying, hey, well, we think this will work pretty well through your optical sprayers. Would you guys like to give it a try? And it's a way to test it just to make sure that we're getting pretty close. So really at the end of the day, Standalone 240 applications are rare. Uh, actually, any standalone application we, we're really staying away from. Using robust rates, we want to target zero survivors. Now, if you do two blanket sprays through the season, expect to do four optical sprays. We want to continue to be on top of these weeds, get ahead of them, manage them while they're small, not let them set seed. Boom height and stability, critical, absolutely critical. If you have a boom that's going to be you know, bouncing over contour banks, you're going to be missing weeds. Uh, you've got to make sure you've got that nozzle height right on a silver bullet and the environmental and media impacts are, are huge. Uh, Karen from Facebook is telling everybody that, that glyphosate's giving people cancer and really we need Karen to just worry about posting pictures of cats. Um, so <laughs> this is a way that we can continue to show that we're trying to do the right thing and, uh, and really there's a lot of advantages to it. There's a lot of things coming in the space and everything that they're looking at is really targeted on individual weed application. It's, it's the way things are going, but uh, yeah, we look forward to working with people that uh, are interested in, in, in trying it out. Uh, if you own one, you'd treat it completely different than if your, your contractor's coming in to do it, but again, it's a great way to, to really check it out. That's it.